Intel was the trusted name in the CPU business in the early to mid 90s, well through most of their history really. And their chips were the gold standard for performance and compatibility. But not surprisingly, they were also the most expensive. And this led to numerous other companies releasing compatible products for much lower prices. The two best known competing manufacturers from around that time were AMD and Cyrix. AMD's AM486 CPUs were essentially clones of their Intel counterparts. They had a licensing agreement with Intel, and they were able to use their microcode. I say agreement, but really it was a pretty difficult legal battle they had to get through to be able to do that. But because of this, you could pretty much expect identical performance numbers and very good compatibility. On the other hand, Cyrix developed their own 486 core, and although the chips had some strong points, they were generally slower clock for clock than their Intel competitors. But they undercut Intel's pricing pretty aggressively, and that meant that people could get PCs at much lower price points. Always a good thing. But today I'm not going to talk about AMD or Cyrix chips. I want to showcase a very interesting 486 CPU that a lot of people just really haven't heard of. This is the UMC Green, aka the U5S, or sometimes just called the UMC Super. UMC is a Taiwanese-based company that was founded back in 1980, and they're still around today. In the 386 and 486 era, they were really best known for their chipsets, everything from full motherboard chipset platforms to storage and I.O. controllers. But being a well-established chip maker with their own fabrication capabilities put them in a very good position to try their hand at making CPUs. But unlike AMD, they went for a custom design similar to the approach that Cyrix took. And thus was born the UMC Green a non-clock doubled 486 with models at 25, 33, and 40 megahertz. Now there was one model release that had a float point unit called the U5D, but from what I can see it's incredibly rare and I've never actually seen one before personally. Almost all of the chips produced were SX type CPUs without an FPU, so more budget focused models. I can't seem to find a consistent release date anywhere for these, but it seems it was sometime in 1994, which is really a bit late in the game for non-clock doubled parts. The Intel DX2s were out for a couple of years by 94, and they'd already come down in price a lot. And for those with deep pockets, the Pentium P54C processors were also just starting to hit the shelves. But regardless, computers were still really expensive in 1994, and there was still a big market for budget SX-based systems. As the name green implies, one of the defining features of this CPU is its power-saving capabilities. Apparently it supported a special system management mode, or SMM, that allowed firmware-based power management. It also supported variable clock frequencies, which sounds like a primitive version of Intel's SpeedStep or AMD's Cool and Quiet technology. But this really isn't the most interesting thing about these CPUs. The name Super that made its way onto the ceramic top of many of them hints more to what makes them special. UMC's 486 design focused on efficiency, so being able to do more work in fewer clock cycles compared to competing products. I'm really not sure how many optimizations were made, but the big one that everyone quotes in online documentation is the improvements to integer division. An Intel 486 needs 40 clock cycles for division, whereas the UMC Green needs seven. Big difference there, equates to some very substantial performance gains. So not such a boring 486SX after all, but what on earth happened? Why didn't UMC capitalize on the superior core architecture and keep things going? Well, not long after the release in 1994, it all came to an abrupt halt. Intel claimed that UMC infringed upon a couple of its patents, including the infamous 338 memory management patent, and it resulted in a long legal battle and eventually a settlement out of court. UMC agreed to stop making their 486s as part of it. It was widely believed that the not for sale or import in the US label that's on most of the UMC green chips was a result of their legal battle with Intel, but from what I can see, UMC actually never intended for the green to be sold in the US at all. Perhaps a move to limit the legal risks? Really not sure. There's obviously a lot more to this side of the story, so I'll include a few good links in the description for anyone who'd like to learn some more. But hey, being a Canadian, I can rest easy having this in my possession here. UMC did actually produce a 486DX2 version of the green in 1995, but it never made it out to market due to the legal troubles being in full swing by that point. There are a few engineering samples floating around out there, and I would love to get my hands on one someday. So before I start testing, just wanted to give a quick shout out and thank you to Andrew from the UK, aka the Brassic Gamer. He sent me this CPU a while back, and I'm only now finally getting a chance to try it out. But Andrew's got a great blog and YouTube channel where he goes into a lot of depth into many retro PC hardware subjects. I'll include some links in the description, so be sure to check him out. 
I've got a number of CPUs here that I'm going to be comparing it to. Obviously, we've got to try the Intel 46 SX33, which would be the direct competitor to this one. And I've got a number of other chips too, including faster ones like the infamous DX50, which is not a clock double chip and uses a rather challenging 50 megahertz bus speed, but also some clock doubled competitors too, like the SX250 and even the venerable DX266. And of course, I've got to try a couple of Cyrix models, including a DX33 and DX266. I'm also gonna throw in an AMD DX40 for good measure, since Intel really didn't release any chips based on a 40 megahertz bus speed. And I won't spoil anything yet, but there will be a brief appearance of a Pentium Overdrive CPU here too. For testing today, I'm gonna to use my favorite 486 board that you've probably seen in a lot of my other videos, the Shuttle Hot 433. It officially supports just about every 486 chip out there, including the UMC Green. And coincidentally, uses a UMC chipset, the UM888. The shuttle board does have specific jumper settings for the UMC Green, although technically it should work with Intel's SX jumper settings if a board doesn't call it out specifically, but I'm just going to follow what's in the manual for it. Alright, so the system booted up no problem, and as you can see, Check CPU does identify the CPU correctly. Its vendor string is interestingly just UMC repeated three times. Not sure why they did that, but okay. Let's start with the good old system information CPU benchmark. This one's heavy on the arithmetic and there's no float point math being done, so DX chips don't have an advantage. But yeah, we can see the UMC Green is significantly faster than the Intel SX33 with a score of 93.2 compared to the Intel chip at just 72, almost 30% faster. And we see the same improvement on the 40 megahertz model compared to the AMD DX40. The 40 megahertz green is also able to best the SX250 and even the DX50, which is quite impressive considering that it has a bus speed advantage too. It's also just a hair away from matching the Cyrix DX266, which is really impressive. Next is the SpeedSys CPU benchmark, which does do a bit of float point math. So the SX chips are at a slight disadvantage here. But that doesn't really seem to matter much, does it? The 33 megahertz UMC green chip is over 50% faster than the Intel SX33 and matches the score of the SX250 despite having a much lower clock speed. The 40 megahertz model is really impressive here too and isn't far behind the DX266 at all. Interestingly, this benchmark always seems to favor Cyrix chips. Not sure if it's just the way Cyrix does caching or their slightly superior FPU, at least it was superior in the 46th generation. And one last synthetic CPU benchmark, this is the well-known Drystone 2.1 test measured in MIPS. As opposed to Whetstone, Drystone is arithmetic focused and doesn't benefit from an FPU. But yeah, here, clock speed is king it seems. I don't think this one benefits as much from the green's efficiency optimizations but we still see a solid 14% advantage over the SX33. One thing I really wanted to look at was the L1 cache performance of the UMC Green. On 46 systems, the L1 cache is on the CPU die and its performance can vary quite a bit due to CPU design differences and core clock speeds. Interestingly, the UMC Green benefits from very low L1 cache latency compared to its competitors. The 33 megahertz UMC Green enjoys the same L1 latency as the DX2 at double the internal clock frequency, and the Intel SX33's L1 latency is double that of the UMC Green, even more so if you look at the Cyrix DX33. I have no doubt that this must be contributing somewhat to the CPU's great performance. I don't think it's just the ALU improvements. Okay, time to check out some 3D gaming benchmarks. Let's start with 3D Bench 1.0C. No float point math here as far as I know. And yeah, it's clear the UMC Green is a fantastic chip for 3D gaming. Here we see about a 35% advantage over Intel chips at the same frequency. And again, the 33 megahertz green is able to best the Intel SX250. Although it is important to note that it does have a bus speed advantage. So faster memory cache and PCI bus, which 3D Bench really does benefit from. The 40 megahertz model here is really impressive too isn't far behind the DX266 from Cyrix and Intel. Next up is PC Player. This one does benefit from having a float point unit, so the DX chips do a little bit better here. And as you can see, this is also one instance where Cyrix chips actually outperform their Intel counterparts by a small margin, but still nothing compared to the huge 30% performance advantage the UMC Green has. And it wouldn't be a 486 benchmark session without running some Doom. We see a very similar kind of pattern here, but with a smaller advantage for the UMC green chips. They're about 18 or 19% faster than their Intel counterparts. And the 40 megahertz model is just a little bit behind the Cyrix DX266. 
As you probably noticed, unlike PC Player and some of the other synthetic benchmarks, these Cyrix chips really just don't do well in Doom at all. So all I can really say is, wow. <laughs> the UMC Green is faster clock for clock than any 486 I have in my collection by a long shot. So I hinted earlier about the Pentium Overdrive. If this thing is between 20 to 40% faster than an Intel 486, could it possibly stand up clock for clock to Intel's next generation Pentium with all its super scalar goodness and heaps more L1 cache memory? The pod has an interesting safety feature that I covered in a past video. If the OEM fan fails or isn't detected, it drops down to a one times multiplier. So essentially a chip that just runs at the bus frequency, just like the UMC green and non clock doubled 486s. It'll be the slowest Pentium ever at only 33 megahertz, but it still has all of those next generation architectural advantages. This is obviously a pretty ridiculous comparison. The Pentium architecture, even a 32 bit bus limited version of it like the pod, is so apples to oranges it's not even funny. But if we look at legacy non float point based benchmarks, maybe it could stand a chance, so let's find out. First let's look at 3D Bench 1.0C, which the UMC chips do really well in. As you can see, it can almost stand up to the Pentium, it's only 3 frames per second behind. And if we consider the UMC's performance as a reference point, the Pentium's really only 9% faster in this benchmark, whereas the Intel SX33 is almost 26% slower. So although it couldn't beat the Pentium, its performance is obviously much closer to pod levels than it is to 486 levels in this example. But there's really no getting around the fact that the Pentium is a far superior architecture. And if we look at a benchmark that takes advantage of an FPU and the massive L1 cache and all of the other features, we get a very different picture. In speeds this year, the Pentium is ahead by a pretty large margin. It is 34% faster than the UMC green clock for clock, but the Intel 46SX33 is also 34% slower than the UMC green. So its performance is exactly halfway between that of a Pentium and an Intel 486. Okay, now for some overclocking. So my setup here is able to handle really high bus frequencies all the way up to 80 megahertz. So if the chip can be pushed, I'll definitely find its limits. One thing to keep in mind, once I get to 50 megahertz and beyond, I need to start loosening up the L2 cache timings and adding some memory weight states. So this does negate the bus speed advantage to some degree. Also, the PCI bus starts to get way out of spec once I go beyond 40 megahertz. So I'm gonna be including results with both the PCI bus running one-to-one -one and also at half speed. My Matrox Millennium 2 can handle up to about 60 megahertz without issue, but most cards won't be able to do this. But to my surprise, this chip is an excellent overclocker. I had no problems at all pushing it all the way to 50 megahertz with complete stability, and I could even get it to run at 60 megahertz, but wasn't quite stable enough to complete all the benchmarks consistently, especially Doom. Had to run it a few times to get it to complete, but I will be including these 60 megahertz results just for fun. At 50 megahertz though, that's a 52% overclock, which is just really impressive. Tried the same with my Intel SX33, and sadly, I couldn't even get it stable at 40 megahertz, let alone 50. That particular SX is already pushed to its limits, it seems. The silicon quality is obviously very good on the green because I can even run the CPU at its default 33 megahertz at greatly reduced voltages. It's totally stable at 3.45 volts, which is a massive undervolt, and just a testament to the potential of these things. Not surprisingly, these chips really shine at higher clock speeds. I mean, just look at those results for 3D Bench. The 50 MHz green just about matches the DX266, and at 60 MHz, it just leaves it in the dust. The increased PCI bus frequency here also does make a big difference, as you can see. We see a similar story with Doom, but the 50 MHz green couldn't quite best the DX266 from Intel. At 60 MHz, it did, though, and it manages a very impressive 31.9 frames per second. If we look at the synthetic speedsys benchmark, the green at 50 and 60 MHz steal the top positions in the charts, pushing past all of the clock doubled processors here, which is just really impressive. And with the higher core clock speeds, the L1 cache memory benefits from even lower latency. The results at 60 MHz are about what I would expect from an AM5x86 at more than twice that clock speed, so just really amazing. Well there you have it, the UMC green is nothing short of an incredible 486 just runs circles around the competition. It's honestly really quite sad that it had such a brief existence and that it wasn't available to many of the prospective buyers out there. It really was just too little too late and it remains a forgotten and forbidden blip in the history of PC hardware. 
but it was really neat to put it through its paces and just wonder about, you know, what could have been had it come out just a year or two earlier, and of course if UMC managed to navigate around all the legal challenges. But I think it really could have shaken things up in the CPU market, at least until the Pentium became mainstream in 1995 or so. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. And if you enjoy my channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. My patrons get perks like early access to my videos, behind the scenes footage, and more. And as always, don't forget to check out the description below for more information and other useful links. Thanks again.